Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. We have sun shining after what a crazy weather week we had this week. Uh, so thank you for being here. I have notes today because there's a lot to say about our guest speaker, Michael Scutari. Um, first of all, did anyone take his plant class? A few of you did? Okay, so some of you are familiar with him, but he is a former teacher naturalist at Mass Audubon. And being of most, mostly Southern Italian descent, Michael celebrates his love of life and ethnic diversity through his cooking, his family genealogical studies, and his teaching of both children and adults. Michael describes himself as a teacher, naturalist, ecologist, cook, family historian. <laughs> See, I told you why I needed notes. Um, <laughs> I know. Today's presentation from Ar Arberia with Love is a very different type of armchair traveler experience and one that is quite personal to him. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much, Debbie. Yeah, be benvenuto, benvenuto, benvenuti, everybody. So, uh, yeah, I don't need to say anymore. Ha ha, great. Yeah, so I, 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 Mass Audubon, I worked at Moose Hill. Some people know that uh, for about 10 years. You know, it's right down the road. Great, right? Okay, and uh, you guys hear me? Can Walpole, you good? Okay, good. I, I, and I have been on stage before. It's been a long time. I sang a cappella in, in, in college and uh, I danced around a little bit. So I know not to have this too close to my mouth. Um, it'll be like this. It'll be also over there too. Okay. Um, so we're, we're going to take a trip here today. This is, this is armchair traveler class. And uh, of course, you know, how, how many people, I guess, have been to these classes before, these armchair traveler? whole bunch. Okay, great. And I've learned a lot from you guys already. Okay, I've learned a lot, and, and you'll learn some things from me. Uh, usually, I ask a lot of questions. I don't know. I, I will do some of that in this class. Um, I'd love to hear more questions from you guys. I think there's, just, there's a lot here. There's a lot to present and, and things um, like that. So, uh, <laughs> benvenuti a San Costantino Albanese. So, that means welcome, and I speak some Italian at times, uh, to this little town, called San Costantino Albanese, in the, uh, within the Polino Mountains of southern Italy. And people know, well, Polino Mountains, I don't know where that is. <laughs> Most of Italy is very mountainous. We'll see some pictures of that, too. Um, so it's down there, down the hill, and there's a little river that goes through it. So this is south of Rome. This is south of Rome. So I, one question I can ask people is, what do, you, what do people know about Italy south of Rome? Raise your hand. Call it out. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> if you can, I can wait. Come back to you because you're eating. Naples, Pompeii area. Okay, Campa that's Campania region. I have some relatives uh, from from there as well. Great. So we know south of Rome, we have Naples, Pompeii. Aha. Ah, uh, what what caused Pompeii to to be what it was, what happened to Pompeii? Soma Vesuvia, a volcano. Yeah, pretty nasty one. Okay, what else do people know about Italy south of Rome? Because that's what this is. Malfi Coast, you got it. Hans, good old friend. Apulia, yes, with a truly. Who said that? Yeah, truly, the Apulia, really unique region. Okay, what else? Capri, yeah, Capri, Capri, Ca Capri. Yes, fancy Capri, Rodeo Drive. You got it, which is a Malfi Coast kind of thing. All right, awesome. Yes, one more. Cinque Terre, which is actually to the north. That's not Livorno. That's way up to the north. That's way up to the north. So uh, a little, little bit different south of Rome. So, uh, so that's where that's where that, that's where this place is. Yes, sir. In the back. Avellino, Avellino. Some of my uh, relatives were also from that area too, which is outside of Naples in the mountains. So we know that Italy in general has a lot of mountains, and. And uh, this class, uh, like Debbie said, is uh, very personal to me. And I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this part in the history. Uh, but three of my, uh, out of my four great-grandparents uh, were, were children, were, were came from Italy. They came from, and some from Avellino, some from a little farther north, and some from this area here, which I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Uh, San Costantino, uh, Albanese. We're going we're to figure out where it is. Yes, in the back. It was Constantino. Great. Constantino really stands for someone who's Emperor Constantine. So probably so a long time ago it was kind of related to that. Same with that. So kind of neat. Kind of neat. Okay? So great. Great, great. So uh, th th this whole thing, learning about all this was a part of a uh, uh, family history 
for me that eight years ago I got, got into this sort of thing and I realized that yeah, there's this neat town and you know, there are a lot of other neat towns but I tell you what, this town and n others like it have been written about and even believe it or not, some of my relatives are part of these books, literary stuff and poetry of uh, this romantic movement in the, uh, in the uh, mid 1800s and goes back farther than that, even poetry, look at that, oh my gosh. Um, so if I could show people in a while. So there's a lot. A lot have been documented uh, about this. But let's, um, let, let's get to some pictures here. Get some pictures. Ready? I'm going to put it back like this. And hopefully people can hear me. Ready? <laughs> All right. Down from the cows. I feel like I'm a DJ, right? A chair is a wonderful idea, but unfortunately, I can't sit still. I wish I could. So <laughs> this right here, no, really, this right here, I'm going to have to go like this now and again, okay? Uh, here's the actual town. We're down, we were up higher, up higher, and there's a Sarmento River that goes through San Costantino Albanese. Now, Albanese, what do you think I'm referring to with that? Albania. P and if, two or three things that I want you guys to remember. If you ask, but Michael showed all these pictures, but if you remember anything, people came from this town, to this town, from, from somewhere else, some kind of from Albania, they came from somewhere else, you're going to learn about that, they were of Albanian descent, Albanian Greek, so Greek Albanian descent, and uh, they came in and repopulated the place, and there were Basilian monks here, there were some other native peoples here, and um, they have unique culture language and religion that they practice in Albania has to do with that. And there's a Sarmento River, which is very neat. It gets really flooded, then it dries up. Um, and in the middle right here is a what? That's a church, right? In the Borgo, right? The Borgo of the town. So the church, that's the Chiesa Madre, the, the mother church. We're going to see another one. We're going to see that. We'll see another one that's like that um, too. And uh, I, I wish I could make this flow more like Rick Steves. Who likes, whoever likes Rick Steves? Amazing. Oh, my gosh. I, I love it. I've learned so much. I keep learning. So and doing this, you know, getting here is really tough. Those roads are very windy. But everybody's living up here, and they have for a very, very long time families. And unfortunately, some families like mine, part of the family stayed. Other part of, uh, went to Brazil, or they went to America. Uh, but still, I have relatives over there uh, still. But, you know, you, you'd be here living in the Borgo, the village. And then most were farmers, and you go down to the hill. <laughs> you go down towards the river to farm, and that's what you did. And that's what people do, kind of, uh, especially in southern Italy. So, um, and beautiful, a lot, lot of forests. And so this right here uh, is, is a, one of the largest national parks in Italy. I didn't know that until I started reading. It's called uh, the, the Polino National Park. And there's another one up in Abruzzo, uh, which is a uh, number 100 miles north uh, here too. Okay, so this is southern Italy. Italy south of Rhone in, we will see, the region. We'll see the region in a moment. Here we go. Here we go. So uh, some people mentioned uh, Venice, you know. Of course, there's northern Italy up here. Quick, quick, quick. quick. You know, Venice is up here. The Veneto, Venice. Then we have Rome, central. And, uh, of course, Tuscany and, and Umbria, that's central. That's Siena and all that. There's Italy south of Rome. There's more. And this, this along with uh, Abruzzo up in here, was all a part of the Kingdom of Two Sicilies at one time. People may know that. There's so much to learn with these things here, too. So we're right there. We're right there. That is where San Costantino Albanese is. Very close to the Adriatic, or the Ionian Sea, and the region of Calabria. And within, within this area is a, um, a cultural region, so geographic region, that's the mountains, but a cultural region called Arberia, where they speak this unique language. And there's also a smaller one down here in Sicily, near uh, south of Palermo. This right down there. Okay, ready? And I'm sorry, the next few shots are not the best in terms of quality, but anyway, wow, isn't that great? Wow, Italy, other than the Po Valley and some of the, the flat lands here, you know, in uh, Puglia, very few places are flat in Italy. You know, I think you've got to go down to uh, Sicily, or this is the, the valleys. Uh, we're over here, but there's this it's Crati River Valley in Calabria, um, where it's kind of flat. And this area in here is where the Arberia is. And I'll show you another picture with that. All right, come on, here we go. 
I know, I'm not good with these things. No, th I know, this, the resolution is not great. Okay, sorry, that resolution isn't good. But, but, but you get the idea. Let's just pretend, squint your, eye, squint your eyes a little bit. There are so many of these little towns. Here's San Costantino, it's sister town, San Paolo Albanese, and all these down in Calabria speak a, a language called, they're, they're Albanese people, okay? Which means they're, they're uh, Greek, Albanian, and they speak a language that's Southern Albanian dialect called Albanese that's influenced by Greek, like if I were to say in Greek, thank you, you say evharisto, okay, people, some people know that, you know. I, in uh, in Abresh, it's haristis. So they borrow from that, amazing. And they also borrowed from Italian, a little bit from Italian too, which is, which is pretty great. So very different, believe it or not, than Albanian. And it was, Abresh is a, is a, a shit, uh, the language is a, is a language that they spoke in, um, in Albania before they started moving around and the, the 1300s and 1400s, okay? So anyway, lots of villages here, and some of the ones up here that we're gonna, that the one we're gonna look at is, the, the language, the, like pronunciation is more similar to those you'd find in Sicily. Anyway, lots of towns, not all towns, but lots of towns in this region are, have that language, and the religion. What religion do you think they, they practice? Yeah, Rito Greco Byzantino, so Greek, basically Greek Orthodox, but not, Every town has kept up with that. Some have become Latinized, which means Roman Catholic kind of thing. So, uh, uh, and some kind of have lost the language a little bit as well. So, just fascinating stuff that I've learned about. And a lot of this I learned about through uh, talking with professors from the University of Calabria, <laughs> you know, and just all these books I've got. You know, it's really great. So, let's get some other photos here, and soon we'll meet the people. Not a good shot, but so we're, we're, we're going to think of this, okay? We'll go back to that, and we're going to show you this picture. So we know who they are. Who are they? Who are they? They're the Abreche people. So who they are, who, what, where, when, why. We know a little bit about them. Who, what, where. Where do they come from? Some said Albania. Now, I always knew that. As growing up, it's, oh, but no, it came from Turkey. It came from Albania. Guess what? <laughs> How am I going to do this? <laughs> How am I going to do this? All right, Albania. Yeah, I almost need an assistant. I wish my wife was here. Gee whiz. All right, so I have to use my foot. All right, so the people know where the Peloponnese is. I'm going to point to it. People see the, people see the map? Because uh, the, uh, the one, I, the, the one I, I got on the, on the, the laptop doesn't work well. Down here. <laughs> this particular population came from Corone, down in the Peloponnese, which in medi medieval times was called Morea. Other people that came to Calabria or Sicily or Puglia in the middle 1400s came from up here in southern Albania. I'm gonna show you southern Albania in Epirus. Sometimes that area was called Cameria. Anyway, I don't go too much into it, but, uh, uh, and, and the ones that came from this region came over as soldiers to fight for king, you know, Alfonso, one of the Aragon kings, to fight off, yes, Ottoman expansion, okay? And, uh, and these guys down here, the relatives of the fourth migration of the Albanians, Greek Albanians, came from Corone, and they did pretty well. And so they were ecclesiast ecclesiastical, they were, you know, uh, uh, civil servants, they were, you know, your, your, your attorneys, your lawyer, lawyers, uh, attorneys, um, what else? Uh, doctors, things like that, and they were given certain privileges. Anyway, I don't want to go into too much more of that, but there's a there's a good mix of that, and so that's where we know that they came from, where and, and when, mid 1532 to 1534, believe it or not, and other migrations they came in the mid 1400s. But of course, within the Mediterranean region, there was a lot of movement at that time because of you know because of uh, well you know we see here's a map. Because lots of other things going on, opportunities, uh, the uh, Alhambra decree, Inquisition, a lot of horrible things going on uh, at that time. And then, um, and then why? Yeah, so it's why. So p most, even down in Greece, were trying to avoid being, uh, yeah, being, being killed. It's actually, it's, it's, that, that's a serious thing. It's like, well, you can convert or you leave. <laughs> and so they left, <laughs> and they left. And they went way up in the mountains. Why way up in the mountains? 
Safer, you got it. And that's what, that's what they do. And you find that all throughout much of Italy, the coast, not just the southern Italy, but other places, uh, too. It's really something. So, so here we go. Let's get in here. We're going to meet some of the people. Meet, you know, we're going to go to the streets and the churches and all that kind of stuff. And so here we go. Y parece aparece cultura y tradiciones. Uh, send, welcome to San Constantino Albanese. And in the aparece, aparece language, which is kind of unique, you know, um, like Greek. It's Indo-European, but very unique. So a protected language. You come up on, you come up on these signs. Uh, and a protected language by the, the uh, uh, Italian constitution. I think it's a law uh, 282 or something in account. And, and, and that this language and culture, as well as others, are protected. And you can put these signs up and, and promote your culture. And we're going to see these guys, these puppets here. That, that show uh, a, a, a costume, traditional outfits that the women wear, men too, but mostly women, wear these wonderful outfits, and it's part of the tradition. From town to town, these, these outfits are very similar uh, within Arberia and even into Sicily. They're just a little different. Uh, and there's a man over here who's a shepherd. He's got uh, ricotta cheese on his uh, shoulder, and these guys are blacksmiths because wrought iron work is something that's very, uh, means a lot to them and part of their culture. And then there's Diavolo, the devil. So we're going to see in a moment uh, or soon how that's kind of important uh, in this festival that they, they, they celebrate. Yeah, and I'm sorry I don't have one of those little click things, you know. Ah, let's meet the people. So this, <laughs> I love this shot. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? So this is uh, Don <laughs> Gianpero Vaccaro. He's, he's a pre prete or priest in the town, in this town. And there's a, a woman and a man dressed in, in, in traditional garb. I'd love an outfit like that. My wife won't let me get, get me one. And she, said, she said, oh, if you got one. Oh. And she's got a, one, a wonderful this uh, fazzoletta thing on her head, and she's got the lace. And, uh, and you'll see other pictures, uh, not just the, 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 the dress, the skirt she's wearing, but they've got this uh, belt and clasp and things, so just really, really unique. And so this is some festival, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's early spring, winter, where they come out, I'm not really sure, but they do a lot of it. All these festivals over there, Saints Days and stuff, you know, so... Um, Really, really neat. Very wonderful man. He, he's helped me a lot with research, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, pretty neat. And so here we go. This is in front of the church, uh, the, the, the main church, the mother church called Chiesa Madre. And we can see this troupe, dance troupe, mostly a dance troupe, some singing, but mostly dance, uh, women and men wearing uh, outfits. I'm sorry, that, that, that resolution's funny for some reason, maybe because it's blown up. Uh, it's got the Albanian flag, which I, I don't have, but I have this, which shows the, uh, the double-headed eagle. Anyway, you can see that. Um, um, and they do traditional dances, really, really great, at certain times of the year. And, uh, and it, it mentions kind of the name of the group. There's another group called Vatra Yone. They're younger, and they, they've kept some of the culture alive. So some of the songs and some of the dances, um, traditional dances alive. And so the church itself, I'm sorry that didn't turn out well. Uh, we'll see a better picture of St. Constantine in the middle and then, and then uh, the two of the saints on the other side, and we're going to go into this at some point, too. Great. Yeah, it's colorful, beautiful, right? So uh, these, these women and men uh, dressed in a traditional costumes, they love, they love their costumes again, uh, are standing just below these puppets. Pupazzi in uh, in uh, Pupazzi in, in Italian, uh, Nuzazit. Uh, the puppets are called large puppets are called in Arbresh. and these puppets, the the uh, the shepherd and the blacksmiths are out because it is the second Sunday in May. It's the Festa della Madonna della Stella, the Festa of the Madonna of the Stars, where they take these things out of the of the small sanctuary and then they bring it up to the larger church and they have the mass and all kind of stuff and they take them out afterwards and then and then they ignite them. <laughs> they blow them up, kind of. <laughs> Why were the, isn't that great? You take them out. All that work to, to make these things, they blow them up. Well, there's a reason for that. That's, that's uh, everything I've read. It's a good omen to the community. And it's also, you know, uh, promoting the culture. They're, they're holding on to that culture, really. 
and uh and you know of the 800 people or so that live there you know there are a lot of young people coming and going and learning about this and of course a lot of americans you know that have come you know that have come back to see these and the, all sorts of books that show that too pictures old pictures so really great really 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 great yeah, and I'm sorry I don't have the m music. I, at the end, I'm going to sing you a song, kind of, but there's a lot of great uh, CDs and, uh, and uh, DVDs about the, the music that, that you, know, you, do ex you would experience. Um, one is very similar. It's called Zamponia, about the Zamponia. And this actually takes place in Sicily and then up to Umbria and things. And, and, uh, and that's, that would accompany the, the singers and the dancers. And uh, Zamponia is basically a... Um, uh, what do you call it? It's like a bagpipe. Amazing, 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 amazing. So, so, so much more to this. Oh, let's keep moving. Hey. We'll see a picture here next of the actual festival that's taking place. Oh, nope, not, not yet. Sorry. So I thought it was a great picture of this nice lady uh, sitting down with her outfit. And funny thing, it looks, whoops, come on, what's going on here? Uh, it looks a lot like my mother when she was younger. There's my mother. Looks a lot like it. That's a lot long time ago. Ford Fairlane. Remember those? Yeah, it goes back to the 60s. My father took that. Anyway, so here we go. Musazit or the Pupazzi, the puppets, uh, at San Costantino Albanese. There we go. And it's a festival. They bring him out and they blow him up. <laughs> and then they bring him to the church, the, the sanctuary, the smaller sanctuary, which we're going to see soon, called Sanctuary, the Monodona della Stella. We'll see that soon. That's where, and that's where these kind of hang out after they're fixed for the rest of the year. Oh, we'll see it soon. Oop. But wait a minute. I put in another festival in here, too. And you're going to go, oh, what's going on with that? What are these guys doing? What are they collecting? Truffles. Truffles, great idea. Who knows? Olives, not olives, great. This happens in October, and there's a festival called La Rocolta de la Castagne. What's Castagne? You got it, chestnuts. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. You got it. So chestnuts. These ones did not come from here, but yes, chestnuts. We don't have these here in America anymore. Well, not in most places because of the chestnut blight. That's another class. You want to know about that, you come talk to me. But these big burrs have chestnuts that are usually a little smaller than the ones I've got in that bag. And usually the festival here underneath this tree in the middle of October would be done with women, not men. Uh, men out there. Uh, and the women would all get together kind of do this and sing songs and, and everything. And there's, there's a lot to that. But, uh, but this, yeah, the chest, chestnuts, you, you survive the winter eating this. You could you make it, put it into flour. You do other things. Or you give it to your animals so that's another, another thing so um chestnuts are lifeblood just amazing amazing you know uh rabbits you know like the leaves you know <laughs> all sorts of things you get for your <laughs> rabbits that you might have for another meal so uh yeah so here we go other pictures of the chestnuts here we go yes yum yum i just heard that uh what did i do here da, 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 da. there we go lovely chestnuts and uh, you know i've uh, whoa, no not yet not yet uh, my cousin, I have a cousin out in uh, Wendell, Massachusetts, who grows not these kind because they don't survive in the winter here, uh, but the Chinese chestnuts. So there we go. The next, the next shot is of the sanctuary della Madonna della Stella, and and this and, and this is unique. The heart of the community, and you find it these these Abreche towns. Uh, have a, f a big church and they got a small church. They have chapels. Others were torn down over the years, but this is this is this is really great. And we're going to see it. We'll go inside it. Uh, this church and the mother church were built in the 1600s. Looks like much older, much older. Uh, there were some other churches on site, uh, at chapels really that go back to the, the 10th century, you know, 1100s, uh, where the Basilian monks are. But but we can see this is Byzantine artwork here. That this uh, cupola here. Some of them, they call it a tambora, like a drum. Um, and it's a Greek, of course, the Greek, almost not quite Greek revival style, but um, really great. Hand-hewn stone, very clean, and um, really great. And this is above the town again. This is like some of the first shot we saw. We saw. And there are a few pictures of this. A lot of shots here, a lot of photos. And please, any, at any time, if people have questions, please let me know. And olive trees on the left-hand side over here. 
And here you go. There's that cupola up there at the top. You know, really great Spanish tiles, but it's just uh, really something about this. And other books that I have uh, from Greece, from the Mani Peninsula, somewhere in the Peloponnese, have very similar artwork. So people make a place. They brought, right? They brought their, their, um, their culture with them. And, and they used uh, used they had around them, living off the land, you know. A lot of chestnut wood in here, too, oak and chestnut. So here's another side up just from that. And we can see the trees that are whitish. Jeez, I don't know why this didn't turn out so well. Maybe I have it so big. I'm sorry about that. It's blurry. I think if I, if I it, it wasn't like that before. If I zoomed in, it wouldn't be that way. So I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. Um, the trees that are whitish, people know what those are? I think Hans had said it over here. Olives, you got it. And and so what kind of climate are we talking about? Mediterranean climate, yeah, even here, 2,000 feet up. It's Mediterranean enough. You get a higher up, it gets a little more temperate. And a lot of, uh, you know, um, you know, chestnuts and oaks and hollies and things like that that grow here. So just beautiful, beautiful. And we're going to go inside next. Well, that one turns out better. Wow. Wow. Really something. So, uh, people know what's going on in this picture. <laughs> I know a few things, I suppose. Does anybody know what's going on? Do you want to know? <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's Constantine. That's that's Constantine, as in Constantine, as in the Constantinople, and you know different. Uh, well, shepherds, but they're holy or something, right? So that's it's that's the. Uh, um, uh, apostles and all kind of stuff. So I don't know if this is ascension. I don't know. Th there's a lot. This is a, this is the ceiling mural. But but I tell you, because this church is the 1600s, the time period. That's that's when. That's Renaissance, right? Kind of. You know. So in doing this, I saw. I, I look at what Rick Steves had done. Oh man, I'm the art of. Uh, he, the, there's a show I saw the other day. Art of early Middle Ages. You know, this is not early Middle Ages. Yeah. Some of the other artwork is is earlier. This stuff. This is later. Oh, I mean, you, you start seeing the, the, the pictures of people's faces. I don't know if it's Renaissance, but certainly some humanism in the air. I don't know if it's Baroque either, but it's kind of it's kind of getting there. I think so. Um, so this is going to be different. This artwork than what we will see when we go inside the bigger church, where we see the iconostasis. Really great, really great stuff. So uh, beautiful, and uh, many of these were touched up within the last fifty years or so by by some artists um, preserving that artwork and that part of that culture. All right, so that, that's the, here's the mother church. And, you know, you've got history here. Beautiful hillsides, you know. History, and you've got modernity, things like contemporary. You've got uh, recycling bins and cars and <laughs> all sorts of other stuff. Very clean, very clean. Little towns like this, you know. Really great. Very nice. Not easy to drive, but I'll tell you what. You, you know, growing up in New England... Um, I grew up in Vermont mostly, so the windy roads are you're just used to. A and this mentions, of course, you know, uh, you know, saying welcome in uh, welcome in and in, uh, in and Benvenuti is Italian. Lots of different languages here, so so great. People come from different places, a a and it's it's true. I think people in this town will speak Abrese, but most of the time they're speaking Italian, some type of Italian, even a dialect. You speak strict Italian which is really Tuscan Italian. You could speak some kind of dialect. One town speaks partial Italian, one type of Italian dialect. You go to the next town, it's a little different, different words. You gotta speak some Greek, especially if you're clergy. Apparently I had some relatives that were, that were you know, priests and all kind of stuff. Uh, so you gotta know different languages, you know, and English, oh yeah, English helps. <laughs> so it's really, it's amazing. Um, when, uh, amazing when, when I have a hard time speaking English. Really? <laughs> Here we go. So here's the front of the, m of the mother church. And there's uh, Constantine, Emperor Constantine, okay? On a Mallorca tile, just beautiful. Uh, and we're going to go inside here, enter the church. Really great. There we go. So patron saint, Constantine and Elena. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it's neat. So, so I was looking at this. Okay, this is not... This not 
you know Notre Dame or anything, but this is this is different. This is different. And uh, when when I saw some some films uh, about uh, the Peloponnese, very similar. You know, you've got you got this is the nave, I guess, and that's a kind of stasis. You know, the, the sacred and the holy, and all kind of stuff. And then uh, and then there's this religious. So th these um, this is more Byzantine, the more of the Byzantine art, which is the early kind of middle early mid Middle Ages kind of things. And so, uh, have people ever been to a an Orthodox Greek Orthodox Church, you've been okay. So, so you know, th th there's a reason that that these are you see these images, that you p but you don't if you go to a Catholic church or other places. You know, it's just this, this kind of the, the thought is to to connect people with the divine in some way. So, uh, really great. And this, like I said, again, this was definitely uh, uh, upgraded and, and renovated by this artist from Albania, uh, whose name I know, but I'm not going to throw it out there. It's just uh, it's really great. So, and there's the ironwork, and we're going to get close to that ironwork, really beautiful lattice work almost, you know, that we see in other places within this town. And great, we see the ceiling has been cared for. And uh, people know what's going on in this picture up here at the top? <laughs> does, any, does anyone know? I'm not sure. Okay, well, just enjoy. There's, I, I, I don't know exactly uh, what's going on there too, but it's, uh, it's <laughs> but it, maybe that's not the point. Just enjoy. When you go to these places, it's you go to any place. It's great to research. It's great to research a little bit about the town, so you learn when you're there. So it's uh, biblical, biblical scenes and things like that. Uh, for New Testament, New Testament. Although there's some some Old Testament kind of things here too, as we shall see next. Beautiful. Yeah, aren't these color colors are colors are really something. The amount of time it took to to put this together, and um, there is there is Greek. Of course, there's Greek in here because that's that's the language. Now, now here's the, here's the thing: um, the protected language, protected religion. Although, you know, although there's there's churches like this, and there's an eparchy, which is like a diocese. Although all of that, they still have to answer to Rome. Vatican, the Pope, still, just still kind of things, but it's uh, protected, but they still, they still, they have some kind of deal. I don't want to get into it because it's confusing, uh, but beautiful ironwork and beautiful, uh, uh, just painting here, r really something. The Last Supper, okay, I know that. <laughs> we know that one. A number of other biblical scenes, just great. So I did. Which one? The Greek flag. Yes. There we go. Thank you. Sorry about that. Put it over here. I know too many props. How about that? Right? <laughs> there we go. Let's put that over here. There we go. Good. Get, get a little closer here. Maybe I should have had the headset. Ah, now, now this is interesting. I, now I don't know if this is that Madonna della Stella. There's other thoughts this here that I've read that this might be Madonna or the. I'm sorry, Madonna Odietria or Odigitria, um, in which si is similar to what you'd find in parts of Sicily, and that Madonna is the one who shows the way. It could also be the Madonna of the uh, the Polino Mountains. So a number of different things here, um, but um, usually they would parade her outside at some point. But um, this is just great. It's lovely, and there's a lot more of this. Uh, I have so many more pictures of this sort of thing. Uh, within the church. Okay, now we come out of the church and we're in a little piazza. Lovely, lovely. I wish those recycle bins weren't there, but uh, but pretty, you know. And let's bring our plants out for the year. And so now now we're gonna we go to the streets and you see buildings that are pretty old, you know, a few centuries old, 1700s, 1800s, and others that are even older. So that preserving of the history is really great. And, and a number of places also, you know, we were in, we're, we'll see these. Um, what do you call it? Like awning. What do you call that? Archway. Archway. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that is an indication that uh, that that in this town, in other towns in this area, um, this town w was uh, owned or, or controlled in certain ways by a feudal family and by a number of feudal families. This one in particular was a Pinatelli family. So the the, the people, just in general, you know, when they moved here in the 1500s. 
from middle 1500s from uh, Koronian Greece uh, needed to get certain concessions, you know, through uh, the King Char Charles V, who was Charles Haps von Habsburg, Habsburg, that allowed him to do all this stuff. And they met with this this guy and this guy, Don Pedro de Toledo, a viceroy, all that kind of stuff. But they had to work it out with Pignatelli, Aragona Cortez, that family. Okay, noble family, all that kind of stuff. And so after feudalism ended in 1820s, by the 1820s, um, you know, people that did well, they worked hard, these civil servants, were able to buy these places. So you see, we're going to see a lot of that. We're going to see these coats of arms and buildings and so on. You know, who knew? They're not noble, but they're just, you know, they put their own stamp on things. Great, right? So we'll see some of that, believe it or not. I, stuff I never knew. I never thought about this until I started getting into this research. All right, lovely, lovely little streets, and some relatives of mine may have lived on this street via via Skanderbeg, um, who was a a, uh, a a prince. He was a he fought uh, for in Albania uh, against the Ottoman Turks until the middle 1400s, and they named the town after them. See, Via means road, and Uja I mean, that's kind of also means road in, but uh, Abresh. Lovely, easy to get around. Easy to get around. You wait to see the stairs. They're nice. Uh, yeah, great. A lot of colors in buildings, too. I love that. Unfortunately, this one, the stucco's kind of falling off. So, via Orazio. So, uh, lovely colors. Wish we had more houses like that, you know, in the stucco. And there we go. Multicolored buildings. And there's a nice hillside. Deco plants. Very old building we're going to see up close pretty soon. And re remember, at one time, there were m mainly farmers that lived here, landowners, uh, civil servants, and then the farmers live in these places. And really, very, very old home. Goes back to the 1400s, if not earlier. Um, really, it's tough, tough living. Very difficult living. Difficult living. There's a chest door probably made out of chestnut. Um, good air. Yeah, beautiful natural area here, too. Um, and so they're always, you know, they're always working on the infrastructure. And so you know, one of my relatives may have lived here, so, I've, so I'm told. Lovely iron, uh, iron work again. And uh, they had a fire at one time, unfortunately, that, that, that uh, beam caught on fire. So kind of a neat, intimate look at this place, you know. Very different. Uh, yes, but of course, we have electricity and fiats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no horses and carriages and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, very different. So, yeah, they fixed some of these roofs. You can tell they've, they've done that over the years. Uh, no solar panels in this shop, but I'm sure there, there are some, you know. Uh, but tight, I'll tell you, getting in here, getting in and out, geez, you got to be good. If you're not driving a one-way street in Boston, you're probably going to do okay <laughs> driving in. Oh, really, really. If you've been to Ireland, you'll do well driving around. One lane kind of thing. Um, so beautiful plants that someone put out here. In the, in the sunshine, and here's one of those archways. This probably was a palazzo uh, at one time for that Pignatelli family or one uh, a family that's uh, another related family. And then we're fingering away, nice shots there. And yeah, that great pink and, and yellow. Some relative lived in there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, a lot of wildlife. So, uh, so Basilicata itself has about as many people uh, living in it as, 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 well, kind of my home state of Vermont, maybe five, 600,000. That's it in this little uh, um, uh, region. So th this was a pharmacy, and I, I had a relative that was a pharmacist at one time, but now it's a gelateria. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's great. So, yeah, the converted places, you know. And uh, apparently that's, that's, I think he lived down in here. I don't know. He was he never married. Liborio was his name. And they came, uh, they came over from uh, just over into Calabria. They came over. And his brother set up a, a medical practice and married a girl. That's why he came over. So um, really great. Yeah, so this is old. When you see bricks like this put together, that's very old with the mortar and things like that, really. And it goes back 1400s, 1500s, really old. 
And that's, that's, that's y you see a lot of that in southern Italy. And that's, that's a way of life. And great steps. Much easier to walk down, right? And uh, for processions, religious processions, maybe if you had carts, you're selling food, your, your wares, your produce or something. So a lot different. It's not that, it's not that what, what's that, the hundred steps? What's that in, in, in Rome? Isn't the thousand steps or something? I forget the name. My wife knows. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, but <laughs> unbelievable. Very different here. Easy to get around. So here we go. So now, now, now we see uh, a place that there was a, a palace, a palazzo, palazzo in Italian, where someone has put on a blazone, their own uh, coat of or their own coat of arms, and some distant relative who still lives there, I think, owns this place. Not a scutari. There was Liguori, Pace, these other family members, uh, branches of the scutari family lived there, and they did this in 1928. <laughs> So really, really interesting, um, lovely stonework. I go go home. Yeah, it's like it's like going home, right? Kind of, you know. I go. I never, I never come back. No, no. There's an there's an agro turismo, um, scutari, agro scutari outside of town. And my cousins think, oh, let's go. It's like its own little village kind of thing. So, yeah, there's that, that sort of thing. So, I, I mean, there are people that I know. They're distant relatives. You know, there's a, one of those, are, a few of them are professors or something like that. But I don't really, you know, but it's not, they're not as close. It's been a number of um, generations, you know. That some that stayed and everybody else, like I said, that either went to America or Brazil back, back then. Um, so, anyway, lots of renovations here. And we see the, the ATM machine. <laughs> nice geraniums. Wish my geraniums looked that nice. Oh my gosh. Now oh, we're getting on here. That's great. And here, there's a little restaurant, very, very Italian, right? You could be north, you could, I don't know about northern Italy, but certainly central Italy and uh, Tuscany. And then in, in the south, you find in these little alleys. Oh, yeah. Il ritro il ritrovo della carne. <laughs> Macelleria, Macelleria, the place we eat. I don't know. I didn't go to the pig. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't eat. I don't eat pork uh, and stuff. But yeah, a lot. So a lot of meat. I think that's their lamb. Well, you want know, lamb is good. Um, and it, it's interesting. You're close enough to the ocean, but you got to get really close if you want the freshest fish. Um, but great. Everything's fresh. Of course, I don't need to tell you that. Um, a lot more you can learn about these little restaurants and and uh, everything fresh every day. Amazing. Great. And there we go. Getting out of town is one way out of town. One little way out of town, windy road. Looks like that's like a little town of Vermont. But that's it. Like you're driving, you come up to this place, and then it's, you know, hills, and you're going along the, going along the stream. Um, and uh, the, the weather's pretty nice. They, they do get snow occasionally. It doesn't last. The mountains get it, though. Oh, oh, that's right. So here, oops, there's a really nice mural. Excuse me. Over here of wheat. So they do grow wheat. Wheat and cotton and olives and things. And so the sister town over the river called San Paolo Albanese has a whole festival that's devoted to wheat, a wheat harvest. Really great. And one of my books shows, shows, shows that. Uh, not this town, so similar but different. And great stonework. Uh, so here's a palazzo of some other distant relative or something. Uh, they, they bought this place. And look at this. It's got the whole... Oh, I mean, it's really something, fence kind of thing. Yeah, really something. Yeah, the eagle. So not a double-headed eagle, but, um, and so they didn't, not an inheritance. This is something they bought. I'm sure there was a palazzo at one time, so beautiful. Um, really great. And and stone from, from nearby. Yeah, the mailbox, isn't that interesting? Um, and here we go, the backside of the mother church again. Chiesa Madre. Yeah, really great. I love the, the colors here. And the weather, yeah, it's a good, great. This time of year, it starts cooling off and drying. Very good. Actually, we'll get winter rain. Sorry about that. So this is the other side, I think, of that of that one palazzo that we did see, um, the other side of that. So great. And most of this is marble. Marble slash um, limestone.
All right, so here, <laughs> here's a palace that's that's uh, from a palace that, that I, I wasn't able to see. Now, th but this is significant. I think this is, this is significant in a number of different ways. Um, this one I wasn't able to see. There's not much to the palace itself, but this blazone or coat of arms is really neat. This is really neat. These are two, the gemelli, they call them, two uh, uh, twins holding each other. And they're the, the, the fellow that did this, some distant relative, supposedly, a uh, fellow who did a lot of writing in some of these books, um, who was a part of uh, th that intellectual movement I may have I've mentioned in the 1800s, a literary and intellectual movement, was also a rebel, didn't like the French bourbons, who did back then, you know, Spanish bourbons, French bourbons, uh, you know, made enough money, and he was a teacher and all kind of stuff that he put his own stamp on things. And this one, in Greek over here, he, it was something that was written that, that's, that quotes uh, one of the Psalms, Psalms 84, uh, 85, sorry, uh, the, the justice, essentially justice and peace, embracing each other. Peace and justice, justice and peace embracing each other. There's a little more to that, but um, really great, beautiful, and that's a different stone, a different, different artwork, but you, and Apache, and some of these other families, believe it or not, came from Naples, and that's why I, I had this thing in here, to this area, and married into that Pignatelli family, and so, you know, and, and living amongst the operation, I had to learn the language, and, uh, and I needed some of my family, I think, married into them. So um, just, just neat, just neat. So a lot of resources out there to learn about this sort of thing. Yeah, almost done, so hopefully people have questions and a few more things we can share, and then I have, to, I, have to sing, I have to say some poetry in a song. So Corone, you know, we put our stamp on places. Like, like this, this is what means something to me. The, the Skanderbeg, George Castriota. The, the prince that fought against uh, fought and for, for for Christianity fought against the uh, the Turks, uh, the Ottoman Turks, and Corone, where we came from, you know, Sharon, it's you know Chestnut Street or something, you know Maple Street. Everybody's got a Maple Street. It's what, what meant something to that community. And some came, yeah. And uh, there's the the Albanian flag, and this is the old town offices. That's just neat, not used anymore. And I'll show you the new town offices where I've gotten a lot of vital records over the years. And a bashkia, that's what they call that. So it's il ufficio dello stato civile in the town. A lot of vital records that go back to the 1800s. And the church, I've been able to go back to early uh, 1700s, late 1600s, which is crazy. Took a lot of time. And here we go, leaving town. Beautiful. Leaving town, clouds coming in, down the hill into, beautiful. And then, oh my gosh, there's an ethnic museum and library. Isn't that great? And there's a, the olives growing amongst the, the forest. So very humble, very humble little museum in here. Uh, but terrific literature in here and some models of those puppets. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Oh, the little ones or the large ones? The big ones? That's a great question. I don't know. They're made on wooden frames. So probably a few days, probably to make them. Paper yeah, the paper mache, exactly. Pa paper mache and filled with gunpowder and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Let's pack it with gunpowder. Oh man, great resources in here. I tell you, so so neat. Hey, yeah, watch videos and stuff too. Uh, and so I'm going to show you here uh, so, so with some other maps. Hold on, snowstorm. Um, yeah, other maps and, and the photos of the area. A uh, lot to learn, not just about this town, but about Arboreche towns in general. And this shows those that I mentioned uh, early on, maybe not the, the best shot, but, but the ones in this area of two, only two in southern Basilicata, and the rest in, uh, in Calabria, kind of before you get to the Sila Mountains, which are pretty big, uh, uh, retained the, the what? The language? and language, culture, and religion. You got it, you got it. So they're doing the customs, they're doing the festivals. There's a whole handful of them that haven't. A few, there's like one or two up here. When you get up to, um, you know, a Campania region, maybe Abruzzo that have. And Puglia, others, oh yeah, yeah, somebody, uh, somebody speaking old, very old in town speaks Abrecia. Uh, uh, but most of them, with the, with the religion, have Latinized, have become Roman Catholic. So, and that's just how it is. Sicily, though, uh, south of Palermo, you've got um, a number of towns. Um, that have, you know, th well, number, maybe three, <laughs> but that's still a number. Near Corleone, so someone said about the godfather, Corleone. Don Vito Corleone, and, and Corleone was, was a town. He was a real name in the movie. It was Andolini, Vito Andolini. 
So there it goes. San Costantino Albanese, PZ, that means Potenza Province of Basilicata, and San Paolo, uh, where is it? Ooh, I can't spell. Uh, ooh, Albanese in Potenza. But most of these other ones, CS, oh, what did I just do? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. No, no, no. No. Oh, no. No, you don't. Uh, no, no, no. Hide. Sorry about that. Most of these other ones that say CS I mean Cosenza province. I can, say I can say I feel closer to this. this the rest of Basilicata is beautiful, but I, I, I don't know. Relatives, they went to Calabria. Everybody went to the Calabria to work and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> there we go. And uh, so I, I think, you know, half of these don't keep up with, with uh, the language. Uh, San Dimitro Corone is a college, well-known college, where they, they hold on to this culture. Oh, dear. i got to fly here. Okay, there's a picture of my great-grandfather who immigrated as, as a child. Okay. So, um, well, I was 17. It's not quite a child. Fernando Amadeo Scutari, who immigrated with his father, Vito Nicola Scutari, and his mother uh, and, and siblings. Uh, so Vito Nicola Scutari was a poet, and, and, and I'm going to read something, um, so I'll, sh I'll show you. He was, a, he was a writer, he was a poet, he wrote for some of these, uh, you know, uh, 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 periodicals, trying to preserve the culture, and because and, uh, and, uh, they're coming, you know, 1870s, 1880s, that's a few years or a few decades after the unification of Italy, so trying to, you know, hope, hope and, and, and for... Um, um, you know, uh, culture will be protected and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, one of the pictures, and so we'll, we'll get to that in a moment real quick. There's an emporio, very cool, okay? So I'm going to go up to that, and I can leave you with this up to the first shot that we saw. Whoa, that was a lot. Fast, 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 ready? Da, 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 there we go. Okay, so, so this is what I'm going to do here. From this... Poetry. I don't have the real book. My cousin has it, but she let me uh, photocopy this a number of years ago. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to read this to you, um, if I can do that. Oh, dear. Okay. So, and then, and then I'll take questions. This I'm going to sing a quick song, okay? So in, a, in October 1898 is when they decided to leave, not to go to Brazil, but to go to America because they didn't Brazil, there was things happening. They didn't want to go down there at the, at the time. So I want people to think that, you know, you're leaving. You, you are your relatives, and you, know, you may close your eyes, and you're leaving this place. You're probably never going to see again. Maybe some of Ferdinando, who I showed you, his brothers and sisters went back. Actually, a few did. Uh, but, but you know, you're not going back. At it's, it's 60 years old, you're probably not going to go back. You're going to go to New York City, and that's it. But you're saying goodbye to, these, to this area, to these mountains that you pretend at now are, have snow on them. And, and you recite this, and I'll, I'll say it just one line. Uh, one verse in, in Italian, then I'll, I'll in, in English. Ai um, monti della nostra Lucania, ai monti novosi che da vera lontani, schiriate a barriera da ultimo mare. Voi siete, voi vedete, voi siete titani, voi siete arimento ne un altro vie. O snowy mountains that I see far away, lined up at the barrier of the last sea, you are lookouts, you are titans, you are daring, there is no other. And as he's saying this, it's October, and in the distance, he knows that, well, he hears, he hears the women singing, because it's October. It's, it's, the Rocolta della Castagna, they're collecting the chestnuts, and they're singing as they do. And I can't sing like the women, but I'm going to sing this song in Abarish. It's very short. Uh, make sure I got it right. Okay. <laughs> Moi bucaramare, si tu lej, si tu lej, si tu lej, mos de pej, si tu lej, mos de pej. Moi bucaramare. And he hears him singing that. It's this really beautiful, beautiful song. He knows he'll remember that. They're thinking of Morea for some reason, which was hundreds of years earlier that they had to leave to go here and have a wonderful life. And now they're saying goodbye. So it's just a... Uh, so um, um, that's, that's it. There's a lot. So with this present day, there's a lot you could kind of pack in here with regard to literature 
and uh, all these other fellas, you know, and, and men and women that wrote stuff, you know, and you could, you could learn about. Um, and uh, and in Sicily, there's whole books about, you know, uh, similar culture and uh, Abrej culture in Sicily. So I think, you know, before I take questions, I w one, one last thing I want to say is learn about your own culture. And I mentioned that to at least a few people here. Learn about where your relatives came from. You know, you have heirlooms, uh, books, stories, photographs. Share them. Never too late. It's never too late to do that. Learn a little bit of the language. Abrej is really tough. Tough, but I can learn a little Greek, you know. But so it's never, never too late to do that. So um, definitely do that. And family history, I've done. You know, y it never ends. So um, any questions, stuff you guys want to questions or stuff you guys want to know more about? Esther, yes. <laughs> cooking. I know someone asked me about cooking. Um, <laughs> bread is a big thing. <laughs> bread is big. Tarali. Tarali's like a. It's not a bagel, but it's a round. Sometimes it can be small. Sometimes it, it's a little kind of round thing, just baked. Um, so there's that. Yeah, cook, cooking is, is similar to other Italian, but we think of Italian cooking. You think, oh, the macaroni and, and you know, and sauce and kind of stuff. Gravy. You know, that, that's very Naples, Southern Italian, anyway. So, but they, but they use a lot of meat. I will say that they, they definitely use a lot of meat in the cooking and, and whatever they have nearby. Meat. You've, you've got onions, garlic, olives. Um, I can't remember dishes. And my relatives, c when they came over, it was like okay, you assimilate. Nobody said, other than something called tombona, which was uh, like a mashed potato thing with a mozzarella cheese in the middle and garlic and stuff. There was nothing else that I thought, that and strufala, uh, but nothing else that I thought was really from this region. Everybody, you, you cook in Neapolitan style, because that's what Americans did, you know, it's Italian. So, uh, but there, there's a few dishes I could kind of, I'd have to look, but I can get back to you on that. But any other questions, stuff you guys want to know? Yes. Yes. All right, so next shot. So yeah, so let me let me go down to it. Great question. Great question. So the Borgo, not even a mile. It's a Borgo. People have been to these hill towns, Borgos and in Italy, southern Italy, yeah, it's not, not very big at all, not five miles, not, e not even a mile across. I think th the town itself is good in area. I think to get from one side of the town to the next is, yeah, a thousand feet. So, you, you know, a quarter of a mile, maybe. That's it. You're all packed. Yeah, you're all packed in. Not much of a street at all, you know, uh, and uh, houses on one side and the house on the other side was on the side of a hill. In the backyard, you couldn't send your kid out to play unless you didn't like your kid because it was on a mountain, you know? And the very, very little streets, when I think about it, now that you say that, we saw so many small towns, and they're all like that. They're beautiful. Small towns. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing. They all at a church. A church keeps everyone together in the middle or something, yeah. you know? Uh, many of them, you know? Um, great. Terrific. Thank you. Yes. should come over here. Yeah, let me come over here. Comment on a denominator b between these towns. Yes. And so Linda here. Is, is that they all have what's called the piazza. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the people live around the piazza. And some of them are close. And some of them are up in the hills. But they all come down on a certain day. Every village or town or city, whatever they call themselves, has a market day. In and it's wonderful. I mean, I told you my daughter just moved to Italy, and this village that you're showing us could look like where she's living now. Yeah, that's terrific. And so many towns kind of like that. And you're right, that's a what, what keeps the community together are these. Uh, yeah, you come to you come to to show your wares. You know, you bring your bring your food out. You know, your, the festivals and things like that. You know, tradition, tradition, tradition. They keep these traditions. It's just great and not. So Americanized, I suppose, in ways, but uh, but but yeah, really great. Thank you for sharing. Beautiful. Homemade wine. Oh my God. Oh, homemade wine. Yes, yeah, pretty strong stuff. Yes, yeah, great. Love homemade wine. <laughs> That's great. Great stuff. So, any other questions, comments, stuff you guys want to know about? Um, it's quiet. 
I hope so. I is this the biggest crowd I've pre presented to uh, for this class, and uh, and I did at Sharon Adult last year, and then New Pond Village a few weeks ago, and um, so um, so I, if you want to know more information about things, and you know, um, th th there's a lot here. I, I don't have enough business cards, but but you can certainly get a hold of Debbie to get a hold of me, and I'll sit down. I'll meet you here sometime. Maybe we'll figure out something. I'll sit down with you. I could show you all sorts of other stuff uh, that I've got to learn about this culture. I don't know. And it, there's just a lot there. It's just it's the beginning. This is just the tip of the iceberg learning about things, and uh, and and not just this town, but 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 like you mentioned, a lot of the Linda mentioned here are so many other towns that are similar to this that people forget about. You know, you know, they go to the Chinque Tari. There's some towns there. People. Maybe not remember, but you know, get it off the beaten track and and learn about what's off the beaten track and what's what's there because it's just there's so much just unique. So um, so you guys, th if there aren't any more questions at the moment uh, and stuff you guys want to know, you can come up to but but uh, to me. But if there are any other questions, I, I thank you. Grazie tante, buon Natale. Thank you so much for coming out. It was really wonderful. Uh, invite me to your home. Really appreciate it. And that's what